Olivia, lovely to meet you. Nice, it's to, nice to meet you too. <laughs> in London for Adventure Time. Yeah, it's exciting. So we are talking to you because you are about to embark on this eight-part mini-series all about your character, Marceline. <laughs> um, so let's just start because not necessarily all of our audience would have watched Adventure Time. So just tell us a bit about what it's about um, and a bit about your character. Sure, yeah, Adventure Time is um, an animated series on Cartoon Network. It's about a boy and his dog and their adventures. And your character? I play Marceline the Vampire mm. Queen, who is an, a thousand-year-old, half-demon, half-vampire hybrid queen. Rockstar. That, that's <laughs> pretty cool. So how did they decide? Had they been talking about it for a while, about this eight-parter that was going to focus kind of purely on your character? I was surprised by it. My director, Kent, he kind of just mentioned it and I was like, what? And he's like, oh yeah, we're doing a miniseries. So it was pretty nonchalant, but I freaked out, obviously. Like, what do you mean? <laughs> That's so exciting. But I'm really, really stoked for everyone to see it. And have you been part of the stories which they've come up with for this new eight-parter? Because they're kind of wacky in um, yeah. in the general like Adventure Absolutely. Time series. I mean, they're kind of crazy. So have you been involved in this one at all, in the stories that are going to be emerging? The story gets pretty weird. Um, it definitely, I mean, Marceline's character in general has always had a lot of backstory and has been very mysterious. Mm -hmm. And the show itself plays a lot into the past as well as the future of the Land of Ooh, where everyone lives. So you get to see a lot about where she comes from and the backstory and the mushroom war, which is all very, very confusing. <laughs> it sounds crazy yeah. when you're talking about it. I mean, I know my cameraman is a, is a big fan of Adventure Time. He has, he's watched a lot of it. So um, they, the stories kind of go very weirdly. Yeah, And we were just absolutely. wondering how how the writers even come up with stories like that? <laughs> Do you have any idea where they even get the inspiration for I them? I have no idea. Sometimes I'll be in the booth and I'll just be reading the lines and be like, really? Like, who came up with this stuff? And then you kind of see it when it's all produced and animated and it really, it comes together. And then I, I'm not in every episode either, so I kind of get you know, chunks here and there of what's going on, at least with my character, but then when I get to watch it, when it's on TV, I'm like, oh, and the story, I mean, it just gets better and better every season. This means someday you'll die. You know that, right? I guess that'll be my last adventure. People will know you from Love Actually. Yes. That is where <laughs> I know I, I can remember watching you and seeing you at that age. Do you still get recognized? I mean, you've changed quite a bit, but do people still come up to you and say, oh, are you that girl from Love Actually? Not really, no. Um, I think people still sometimes expect me to be that little 10-year-old girl. And they go, wow, you've really grown up. And I'm like, yeah, that happens. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, people know, and especially being here in London, it's been brought up quite a bit, so it's kind of nice. I haven't been back since I was filming the movie, so wow. it's all very exciting to be here. <laughs> That's a long time. I know. But you've been doing Adventure Time along quite a while now, haven't you? Yes. So I did Love Actually when I was 10, and I started working on Adventure Time when I was 17. And I'm but 23 now. Why? That's a yeah. long time. But they're giving you a chance to showcase those singing skills again, yeah. aren't they, for this. So I was going to see if you're up for giving us just a, even a few lines of the, of the new song. Sure. Um, the song's called Everything Stays. Okay. And it's a really, really nice metaphor for kind of the issues that Marceline is going through in the series and a bit of a life crisis, I think. Everything stays right where you left it. Everything stays, but it still changes Ever so slightly, daily and nightly In little ways when everything stays Do you think you want to make a return to kind of yourself on screen? Is that something you're working up to? Or do you just really enjoy doing this animation? Um, yeah, maybe one day I'll go back to it, but this has been kind of taking over my life right now, and I didn't even know I wanted to be a voice actor when I kind of fell into it, so it's really just kind of exploded on its own, and I found something I love to do that I didn't even know I would love until I started doing it, so well, that can take a backseat for a while. Yeah, 
you, um, you've got plenty of time. You're still so young. Yeah. So I'm sure we've got more to come. But um, you probably know Adventure Time better than a lot of people. So what do you think about it appeals to both adults and children? I mean, there's so many reasons, I think. Our writers are, like, they're crazy, but mm. they're so smart. And, you know, they have so many levels in the series. You know, they have episodes that are just super random, funny humor, but then they also have these deep, really emotional episodes that mimic real life issues. I mean, I've had fans come up and say that, you know, Marceline and Ice King's relationship has like helped them with their relationship with their parents and stuff like that, as well as like Finn, when he meets his dad, he's not like a very nice guy. And people say, oh, the fact that Finn can kind of get over having an estranged relationship with his father, like has helped me so much kind of realize I could still be a hero, I could still be righteous. <laughs> so I think it's really good for like kids and their parents to be able to watch together. Yeah. Sounds like it. Um, and I wanted, because you play Marceline, the vampire queen, yeah. in here, <laughs> see how you think she would get on with these other vampires. All right. So, if she were to meet Dracula, do you think <laughs> she would get on with him or not? I think she would think he's too old school. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How about if uh, face to face with Edward Cullen from, uh, from Twilight? No. <laughs> Not going to have a crush on Edward? Everyone has a crush on Edward. I don't think so. I mean, I think she would be like, it's a little unrealistic that you just are super sparkly because I go in the sun and I, I burst into flames. So, but he is cute. I personally <laughs> would love to meet Edward. But <laughs> I don't think are. Marceline, I don't <laughs> think he's her type. <laughs> okay. Um, how about the, uh, the vampires from Vampire Diaries? Oh yeah. Damon Salvatore. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Them. And um, and finally, Count Dracula from Sesame Street. <laughs> the Count. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, he taught me how to count, so I'm just gonna say yeah. <laughs> they would be homies. <laughs> <laughs> finally, before we go, just tell us what you think is going to be the best thing about having this eight-part series and why we should watch it. Oh, you should watch it if you have any questions about Marceline's origin and, you know, how she might have become a vampire, you need to watch it. Cool. Thank you very <laughs> much, Olivia. Thank you.